Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Today in history, May 4th, 2002, was a very sad day in Nigeria because there was a plane crash in Kano State. Uh, the news told us that 149 people died when an EAS plane um, crashed into Kano. And, uh, you know, this air, air plane exploded in the densely populated you know, Nigerian northern city of Kano and it was an executive airline services twin engine plane that had taken off from Kano at about 1.30 p.m. Uh, with 77 people on board. They were you know, heading for Lagos. Uh, witnesses on the ground said the plane showed sign of distress and then you know, it plunged to the ground. It ripped through a neighborhood. It basically took off the roofs of dozens of homes and a couple of mosque and about three full blocks of structures were destroyed many victims on the ground burned to death you know due to the fiery explosion and only six passengers on the plane managed to uh, survive now just before that plane crash nigerian authorities had been voicing concerns about the use of old aircraft by many private carriers and uh, you know they had placed a ban on planes that are older than 22 years old. A later investigation into this said, you know, it definitely was not a pilot error. You know, it's just so sad, you know, thinking back to the year 2002 when this happened and seeing how the plane crashed, killing 149 yeah. with just six survivors. Yeah, and it makes it you wonder, a, you know, about the six who survived. I can't imagine oh, what, what you, know. Do you mean? <laughs> No, I'm just saying, you know, I, you, I don't, <laughs> the waking up in the morning and mm -hmm. realizing that you're still alive after 149 people died in the same plane. They're so lucky. It's, so, I, so I don't lucky. know what words to describe so it with. It is, it is just mind blowing and you cannot in any way um, not value life. Um, after that day. It, it is mind-blowing um, what it was, you know, what they went through in the final moments of that crash when they realized that they made it alive. You know, what was the reason they survived? There's many people who have said, oh, you know, if you sit in the back of the plane, you're more, more likely to survive, you know, a crash and all of that. But it, it, it can't be explained. It can never be explained, you know, what that would feel like. Mm. Um, surviving, surviving that. But anyway, you know, it, there's also things that we should celebrate. You know, in the last couple of years, we've not had any uh, commercial, you know, plane um, um, crash. We remember the Nigerian Air Force is the last one that we um, remember, even if we mm -hmm. still haven't gotten any feedback from the um, Nigerian government as to what happened to that plane or where those pilots are, what mm -hmm. exactly the story is. Um, but, you know, in, in, in a while, you know, the Nigerian aviation um, um, has been, you know, has, 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 has fared pretty well. Um, with um, safety of passengers, safety of planes, and all of that, you know, I think they've done pretty well with the, with whatever it is, the uh, laws and regulations that were needed to be to be put in place to ensure that we do not in any way ever get to experience a plane uh, an air disaster in Nigeria again. I think they've done pretty well, um, and whatever it is that they're doing, they should keep it keep it going. You know, ensure that planes are always you know in, in perfect condition, ensure that you know the airlines also always go through whatever checks and balances that need to be checked. You know and and people always, always feel safe on a plane in Nigeria. I remember a couple of days ago, it was in the news that um, the, the government was warning of, um, I think it was a threat by um, the insurgents or whoever it is that was, uh, that made me, I think I saw it on social media, I'm not sure now, um, of um, attacking airlines and some of all of that. But um, I, will I will give kudos to the government that we've had a very, very long time without any air disaster um, here in Nigeria. But rest in peace to those 149 lives and, ooh, to those six, Lord. All right. Also on this day in 2012, I spoke about this earlier. His name is um, um, Alayton Yerinde. He was the private secretary to Governor Adam Sashomale of Edo State back then. This um, happened a week after something that we have also shared on this platform, the death of three journalists in uh, an accident uh, with uh, Governor Oshomale's convoy back then um, in 2012. It was a week after this incident that uh, Alayton Yerinde was killed in his home in Ugbo, GRA in Benin City. Uh, there were insinuations that it either was an assassination or just a robbery um, attack that went, um, uh, that went bad. You know, but of course, there was also the politicization of his death. There was the comments that maybe it was done by 
uh, the opposition party been in Edo State back then, and, and people who were against of Noshobele's government trying to pull him down. It was also very close to, um, I think it was close to his uh, re-election uh, period when he was uh, seeking um, um, another term in office. Um, and so um, on this day, Olayton Yerinde was killed. He was a very, very close ally to Governor Adam Sushumele of that time, followed him from his days in the Nigerian Labour Congress until, you know, he eventually became governor. Um, and then, of course, pulled a light on into his government. So it was one of those sad moments. Uh, nobody was eventually found. There was many, many investigations um, into the killing. There were, you know, two separate gangs that were arrested uh, by the DSS and by the police. There were different uh, narratives and different, you know, the blame game was in different corners or different directions mm -hmm. as to who was responsible for his death. But till date, you know, nobody was found guilty or, you know, completely held responsible. In 2019, I believe there was a guy called Moses Okoro who was uh, released from jail. He had been arrested and charged with um, uh, the murder of uh, Olayton Yerinde. But after years and years and years of him being in prison or being you know, held behind bars, he was eventually set free uh, by the government back then because I, 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 in his case, there was no case file. So he was um, um, asked, uh, he, was, he regained his freedom in 2019, I believe, after years of being behind bars. But it is one of those uh, murders, those assassinations, those killings that have happened in Nigerian um, political space um, that, of course, were, remains unsolved till this date. Yes, this no case file of an issue, you know, he basically went off, off the hook. And so many other people, too, that were also arrested. Yes. No prosecution whatsoever. You know, they either said no case file, no case to answer. Yeah. There's a guy who was suffering that day that didn't have a case at all. Yes. No charge, you know, rather. No, exactly. You know, I remember when, you know, there was pressure on the Attorney General of the Federation to prosecute this case, find the killers, you know, and they say, no, it's, it's not up to them. Their hands are tied. The police should investigate. The DSS should do their intelligence, you know. And uh, like you said, till now, it's one of those unsolved mysteries. We have no idea. So many speculation. Was this by opposition? Is this by, you know, arm robbers? Was this a buggery attempt gone wrong? No explanation whatsoever. And it was just such a sad day. Yeah. And um, took place at 1.30 a.m. On, uh, on a Friday morning um, in Edo State. And so, this plane crashes really at 1.30 p.m. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> really sad. All right, stay with us. That's what we have for you today in history. The death of uh, Olai Tong Yerinde, private secretary to uh, Governor Adam Sashomala in the year 2012. And of course, uh, she spoke about the plane crash. That, yes, uh, in 2002, uh, May 4th in Kano State. All right, stay with us. Uh, we're getting to talk next with uh, the INEC uh, chairman for uh, voter education and uh, information and voter education. And we're going to be speaking about the Anambra elections, uh, forthcoming Anambra elections, and the 2023 general elections. How ready is uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission? Yes. And what next or what more needs to be in place uh, for that to be successful? Indeed. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. Do you stay with us?